Welcome to lesson 10.1. So today we're starting a brand new chapter, chapter 10, and you guys are going to learn a lot about circles. And specifically in lesson 10.1, it's going to be circles and properties of tangents. So before we get started with the lesson, let's go over some key terms. The first term is a chord. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. You already know what a chord is. You've seen diameters before. A diameter is a special type of chord in the fact that it contains the center of a circle. The next term is a secant. A secant is a line that intersects a circle in two points. So it's similar to a chord except for a chord is a segment. We can see up here by definition the chord is a segment whereas a secant is a line. And then the last term is tangent. And tangent, you know from our previous chapter of trig that we can find a tangent ratio, but there's also a tangent line. And a tangent line is a line that intersects the circle in exactly one point. So we're going to take a look at the diagrams over here um, that I'm going to pull up here in a second, and you can actually see what these look like on the circle. So we have circle C. The first segment, this blue segment right here, this is a chord. It's a segment, it has endpoints that lie on the circle right here, and it doesn't go beyond the circle, but it has two intersections with the circle. So this is your chord. Okay, so now we're going to draw a secant, and the secant is this purple line right here. So it's similar to a chord in the fact that it intersects the circle at two different places. However, it's a line, so it continues on beyond the circle. And then lastly, we've got our tangent line. And when we say that it intersects the circle at exactly one point, what that means is that it touches the circle. So it touches the circle right here. If we had the line thinner, you would see that was the only place that it actually touches the circle. And that's considered to be a tangent line, where it just touches the circle at one place. It doesn't actually go into the circle and it's always going to be a line right here. So it continues on, but it only touches the circle at one place. That is your tangent line. Okay, so now that we have these terms on, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. So intersections of circles. There are three different types of intersections of circles. Two circles can have the following. They can intersect at two points, they can intersect at one point, or they can intersect not at all, so no intersection. And we have some special terminologies about some of those intersections. So circles that intersect at one point are called tangent circles. And that's similar to a tangent line, because remember from the previous slide, tangent line intersected the circle at one point. Circles that do not intersect but they have a common center are called concentric circles. Okay, so let's take a look at all these different types of intersections. So the first diagram here is an intersection of circles at two different points. We can see clearly that they intersect right up here and then right here. So this is an intersection of two circles and that's two points. Our next diagram, and let me go ahead and clear that off here. Our next diagram is an intersection at one point. So these would be tangent circles, and they're having an intersection right here at this one point. So similar to the line that we saw before, where the line, a tangent line, intersected at one point, kind of like this line right there that I just drew, tangent circles are going to be similar. And right now I have these two circles drawn where they're not necessarily inside each other, but you could also have a tangent, two tangent circles where if you were to place that circle inside like this, that would also be considered tangent circles because they still only intersect at that one point. Okay, last one are centers that do not intersect, but they happen to have a common center, the concentric circles. So these are two circles right here that we've got. And you can see the two different circles. They don't intersect. They don't have any common points. But they do have a common center. 
You could also have circles that don't intersect where they don't necessarily have the common center, such as if we were to call this circle D. These three circles don't intersect, but they're not concentric because they don't have a common center. All right, moving on. So common tangents, we've talked about that. Common tangents are going to be a line, array, or a segment that is tangent to two circles. And we saw common tangent circles in the previous slide. So, these are specifically now talking about lines. So, the previous slide were common tangent circles. Now, we're just going to be talking about common tangents that circles can potentially have. So, here we've got our first type of circle where it has two intersections. And if we were to draw tangent lines, we can see that it has two lines that could be drawn that are going to be tangent to both of those circles. Any other lines that we would draw wouldn't be common to both of them. We could draw a tangent line anywhere on the circle, for example, like this. However, there's no way that that would be tangent to here. So a common tangent is going to be a tangent line that is tangent to both circles. So that's when you have an intersection of two circles. What if we have circles that don't intersect at all? There are a lot of tangents that can be drawn for this one. So here are all of the tangents that could potentially be drawn between these two circles. These are all your common tangents. And you can see that we have one, two, three, four different lines for this particular drawing. All of these lines are common tangents. You can see every single one of these are common to both circles. They are tangent to both circles if we were to draw their intersections like I'm doing here. Each line is going to be tangent to both circles. Another example of a common tangent that we can have is when the circles are actually tangent to each other. And in this case, there's going to be three different lines that you can potentially draw for this particular drawing. So again, common tangent, we've got this line right here that's common to both circles. The line that's actually goes through the tangent point of the circles. And then we have another line up here that's also common to both circles. Okay, so those are just some examples of common tangents. And you're going to find in your homework additional examples or homework problems that talk about common tangents. So now let's move on to a couple of theorems. Didn't think you're going to get through this chapter without theorems, did you? Okay, so the first theorem says, theorem 10.1 says, in a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if that line is perpendicular to a radius of the circle at its endpoint on the circle. Okay, lots of words there. So what does this mean? We've got a circle C, and we've got a line that is tangent to circle C. What this theorem says is that this line is tangent if and only if, if we were to draw the radius, so from C right here to the point of tangency right there, it's always going to be perpendicular to that tangent line, no matter what. If this is a tangent line, any radius that we draw to the point that they have in common, so here's their intersection point, this radius will always, always, always be perpendicular to the line that's tangent at that point. That's what theorem 10.1 says. Okay, so now let's move on to theorem 10.2. So this theorem says that tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. Okay, so let's take a look at some diagrams again. So here we go, we've got two tangent segments here that intersect at an external point. That's what this means right here, common external point. So these two segments are congruent. They have the same exact length or measure. They will always have the same exact length. So these are segments. So this segment right here is going to be tangent at this point, and this segment's tangent at this point. So if we were to label this A, B, and C, we could say that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. And that's always the case. If they have a shared common external point, so a point outside of the circle, and they are both tangent to the same circle, these two segments will be congruent to each other. All right, moving on to the next slide. 
Now we're just gonna go into an example. And this is an example that has a lot of information on it. And this is actually the last slide for today's lesson. But let's go ahead and go through this example. So we have a circle C with a radius of 45. So we can go ahead and draw a radius if we wanted to. This has a length of 45 units. RS is tangent to circle C at point S. So here's our point of tangency. And RT is, is tangent to circle C at point T. So they want us to find the value of length, or of X, and here's our X right here. And then they want us to find the length of CR, which we don't have drawn, but I'll go ahead and draw that length right here. So they want us to find this length, and we'll call this Y for now. Okay, so first let's go ahead and solve for X. So our theorem 10.2 stated that if there's a common external point and two segments are tangent to the same circle, then they're congruent to each other. So in order to solve for X, we just simply set those two lines equal to each other. So we have 28 equals 3X plus 4. So let's go ahead and solve this, subtract 4 from both sides, and we get 24 equals 3x, divide both sides by 3, so x equals 8. Okay, so this next problem, solving for y, is a little bit trickier, but remember, theorem 10.1 states that the radius is perpendicular to any point of tangency on a tangent line. So if there's only one point of tangency, this radius right here will be perpendicular. And please note, this triangle is definitely not drawn to scale, but we have triangles. Yes, triangles occur in circles too. We have this triangle, and specifically we have a right triangle with legs that have 45 length of 45 and 28, because remember, the radius is going to be the same length no matter where we go. So now we can easily solve for y using Pythagorean theorem. So since y is our hypotenuse, we have our equation y squared equals 45 squared plus 28 squared. So when you go ahead and solve that out, you end up getting y equals 53. So not too bad. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this and look forward to any questions that you guys have in class. Take care. Bye-bye.